How do you do? Infidelity is rampant these days, as people do whatever seems to fulfill their desires for the moment. Never mind promises or vows made in the presence of others. The man in this story was such a one whose lust of the flesh and pride of life were revolutionized the day his heart and mind and life were unshackled. From the crossroads of America, this is Unshackled, true life stories of real people, dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. People are homeless for many reasons, both economic and personal, but cause becomes irrelevant to those who are hungry and sleeping on the ground. They need help. And that's why Pacific Garden Mission keeps the doors open day and night, offering shelter to nearly 1,000 men, women, and children each night. Thanks to friends who send financial gifts, the mission provides nourishing meals, bunks, fresh clothing, as well as medical and dental treatment in the mission clinic, all without charge. When physical needs are met, each guest can address the reason for his or her predicament. Pastors and counselors help them face the issues of their lives, the need for change. Come now and let us reason together, says the one who alone can transform each life. And that transformation is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3139 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. So it's true. You're having an affair with Phil. <gasps> Dave! Dave, no! Get out of no, there. don't hit him! Oh, come come here. Here. Ah! They're oh, messing long oh, enough! Stop it, Dave! Get, Stop it! Oh, don't you hit Phil you again! All. Dave, why did you come here like this? I'm your husband, remember? All you've ever cared about is yourself! All those times you said you were shopping. You deceitful woman, how could you do this to me? Please, just go and leave us alone! Look, only because I have an appointment. But when I get home tonight, you better be out of the house. I never want to see either of you again. Justified outrage, right? Except that the man in our story was no stranger to infidelity and adultery. This is the story of how he learned fidelity from one who is never unfaithful. It's the true testimony of Dave Trapiciano right now on Unshackled. I was the oldest child and the only boy in my family. My mother spoiled me and I became the hunting and fishing buddy of my dad, who was an avid outdoorsman. I had a very cherished role within my family, but at school it was different. I was only four in kindergarten, so I was the smallest kid in the class and I longed for attention, so I was a show-off. That backfired and branded me an oddball. I wasn't good at sports and was never chosen for a team, so I opted to be the best at other things always hoping to prove to the guys around me that I was better than they. In junior high, I discovered a talent for music and practiced the trumpet three hours a day. I played a solo at our high school graduation that got a standing ovation. The quest to be number one and my insensitivity to the feelings of others led me down a destructive path. Popularity brought an array of girls and unleashed passions within me that I didn't try to restrain. In college, I dated many girls. I married, divorced, and married again. Always drawn by a lust for more, and also proving to other guys that I was number one with the girls. By the time I met Allison, I was enjoying my position as a school band director. I recognize you the minute I saw you, Mr. Tripiciano. No, oh, please, call me Dave. <laughs> it seems impertinent. After all, you were a teacher at my high school. Uh, band director? And I'm not your teacher now. Besides, you weren't even in the band. No, I wasn't. But all the girls in the band had a crush on you. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I worked hard to make ours the best marching band in the county. You succeeded, Dave. <laughs> you know, I play in a group that has uh, gigs and bars around town, too. You'll have to come and listen sometime. I'd like that. <laughs> I'd like that, too. 
So, Allison, uh, you're a senior in college now. Yes. I'm a math major. Older than some because I had to work my way through. You graduated near the top of your class in high school, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Salutatorian. Hmm. But my family's poor and they couldn't help me with expenses. Oh, I know what that's like. My parents were second-generation Italian immigrants. Uh, I have lots of brothers and sisters. Do you? Nope. I'm the only son with two younger sisters, so uh, Mom and my grandparents spoiled me. Well, that would be easy to do. Well, would you like to spoil me by having dinner with me tonight? You're married. Oh, my wife and I are legally separated. We don't even live together. My thoughts were, how could a man be faithful with so many pretty women eager for my company? At the time, I had a three-year-old stepson, and I enjoyed being with him. But I walked out on his life and his mother's. I was dating another woman when I met Allison, but that fell through, so I pursued Allison. After a few dates, I moved into her apartment. What does your wife say about me? Oh, it doesn't matter. I already filed for divorce. It'll be final in a few weeks. I'm sorry about your stepson. Well, I had to choose between him and you, and <laughs> no contest. <laughs> My parents found out you're living here. They don't like it. Why? They're very religious. Huh. Glad you're not. Well, I respect them and their faith, so I go to church with them sometimes. Hey, why don't you go with us? They'd like that. Sure, why not? I didn't consider how Allison's parents felt about our living arrangements or the little boy I'd left behind who had come to know me as daddy. My music, my career, my prestige, a band director with great aspirations is all that mattered to me. Going to church with Allison and her parents painted me with respectability, and I like that. If you think your good works will get you into heaven, you're in for a shock. In Matthew, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You can be honest, pay your taxes, work hard, even recycle, and still die and go to hell because the Bible says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all, and the wages of sin is death. Unless you are born again by the Spirit of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, you are not saved and will be separated from God eternally. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus died for you, to wash away your sins and make you acceptable to a holy God. Yes. People don't want to accept the message of the cross of Jesus Christ, but His cross is the only way to heaven because only the pure and holy blood of the Son of God can cleanse you. There is no other way. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What do you think of the preacher? Sure uses a lot of scripture. <laughs> when he learned that you're the school's band director, he asked if you would consider directing the choir at church. I'd be happy to. Really? Anything for you, darling. So, shall we get married in the spring or later in the summer? As soon as my divorce is final. But my uh, folks won't be coming to the wedding. My parents aren't too thrilled about our marriage either, but they'll change when they see how happy I am with you. They don't realize times have changed since they were younger. There is one with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. But I was oblivious to what God said or what he wanted. We married and Allison graduated from college. I bought some land in the country and we built an inexpensive home. I became church choir director. Not because I cared about God. It was all motivated by pride. I had a chance to show off my talents and impress people. I was not faithful during my previous two marriages, but I settled down with Allison by the time our children were born. How's that new baby? Very sweet-natured. A second daughter. My cup runneth over. Will you take them fishing and hunting, Dave? <laughs> if they want to go, why not? I hear the school band won the state championship. <laughs> That's not all. We've been invited to play at halftime on TV for the NFL game next week. Oh, congratulations. I'll be sure to watch. I have my eye on a band director's job in a bigger school district. Oh, you're not moving, are you? Well, if I get the job, 
And why wouldn't I? My qualifications are excellent. Oh, well, we'll have to find a new music director. I don't want to move, Dave. This is my home. But this is for a good cause, honey. We have to make sacrifices in life. I uprooted Allison from her family and our new home against her wishes. I gave little consideration to her feelings. She followed me to another part of the state where I took over a bigger and more prestigious band program. Although we attended church, I didn't have a clue about living for Christ. Many people shared the gospel with me, including my brother-in-law, but pride filled my heart. I lived for myself as five years passed. You can't mean that we have to move again. We're doing fine right where we are. But it's a great opportunity. Better school, more prestige. <laughs> The kids will have to change schools. They'll adjust. This is a bigger school district, better band program. It's a chance for me to make a name for myself. Plus, we live close to a great hunting and fishing area, lakes and everything. I can teach the kids to sail. You know, I've always wanted to sail the intercoastal waterway. What about my job? You're talented, Allison. You'll land another one. I hate the thought of moving again, making new friends. Look, we'll get a fantastic new house and you'll be happy. We rented a house, and a young man named Phil shared the house with us. Allison seemed overly friendly and flirtatious, and I was jealous. After we moved into our home, I had no idea that she stayed in contact with him. I was wrapped up in my own self-centered world. Our son was born, and three years passed. Hey, hello, this is Dave. Dave, do you know where Allison is? Uh, out shopping, why? Actually, she's with another man. It's that young man, Phil. What? I don't believe you. It's true. Ask the neighbors. It's been going on for a long time, and I thought you'd want to know. Go to that park outside of town, and you'll find them. That's when I found them together. I yanked Phil out of the car, and I punched him so hard I broke his glasses. I was reaping what I had sowed, but I never thought about that. When I got home that evening, Allison's car was loaded with her things and our children's. I'm almost ready to go. I see you packed the kids' things, too. You can't take care of them by yourself. They'll have to go with me. Mm, I didn't think about that. Have you told them why you're leaving? Not yet. Oh, Dave. Dave, can't we talk? What do you want me to say? That I forgive you? I'm devastated, Allison. I know. How long has this gone on? Oh, ever since he stayed with us. Four years? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. I, I didn't want to hurt you. I thought we had a good marriage. I've been faithful to you. Faithful? <laughs> well, maybe. But you put everything in your life ahead of me. Your, your career, your music, your sailing, your hunting, your fishing, your photography. You never paid any attention to me. You should have talked to me about it if you had a problem. I shouldn't have to. When you love someone, you want to spend more time with them. I had no idea you were unhappy. Because you're always too wrapped up in yourself to notice. I'm sorry, Alice. Wait a minute, what am I apologizing to you? You're the one who's been unfaithful. Can you forgive me? How do I know what won't happen again? It won't. I promise. Let's not throw away 12 years of marriage. Think about our children. Do you promise never to see him again? Yes. Yes, I'll never see him again. Then, I'm willing to forgive and I'll, I'll try to forget. Oh, thank you, Dave. From now on, I'll try to be a great husband and father. You'll see. We cried and talked all night. We even went on a romantic second honeymoon to the Florida Keys. I treated her like a princess for the next year. That was the best year of our marriage. Then, the clouds gathered again. What phone call are you talking about? The kids said you locked the bedroom door and stayed on the phone for an hour. Wouldn't let him in. Oh, it was nothing important. None of their business. Are you seeing Phil again? No. You swore you would have nothing to do with him. It wasn't him. I don't believe you. Swear on your children's lives that you weren't talking to him. I swear on my children's lives that I wasn't talking to him. Two days later, we woke up late to a rainstorm. Allison was late for work and left home ahead of me, so I offered to take the kids to school. 
It was raining so hard it was difficult to see anything. The road had a steep downhill grade on a sharp curve and leaves had clogged the ditch so the water ran across the road making a small river. That's when we saw Allison's car. It had crashed and was wrapped around a tree. She was badly injured and was barely alive. We'll hear the outcome of that crash in just a moment. People visit Pacific Garden Mission throughout the year and we welcome every visitor. Choirs, youth groups, mission teams come here to serve or to see how we do things. Individuals like nurses, cooks, and computer specialists also write, asking for opportunities to help. Without volunteers, for whom we are very grateful, we couldn't run a mission this big that shelters hundreds of people. One volunteer recently wrote, It was a privilege to serve here. Another wrote, Amazing experience. Thank you so much. Volunteer or not, we'd love to have you visit too. Come alone or bring your business or church mission group. Any day is a good day to visit, but Saturday is unique when we produce an unshackled program and you can be part of our audience. Then stay for supper and the dynamic praise service to close out the day. There's no charge for anything, and if you're tempted to volunteer, so much the better. For more information, write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address, unshackled at pgm.org. I came as soon as I heard, Dave. Thank you, Pastor. How is she? She, she didn't make it. I'm so, I'm so sorry. The, the police said her seatbelt wasn't fastened, and that, that wasn't like her at all. But she was in a hurry because she was late for work. And, and the rain didn't help. The water was running across the road. She lost control of the car when she plowed into the water. Did the children see the accident? Yes. We came onto it a few minutes later. My son, he's too young to realize what happened, but the girls, they saw her there all bloody. We're, we're, we're praying for all of you, Dave. I was devastated by Allison's death. At the funeral, I learned that she was still seeing Phil. However, the pastor's sermon that day brought convictions to my heart of my personal need for salvation. Allison had disappointed me, but I had also disappointed the Lord. I had rejected his words throughout the years, which really were a greater sin than my wife could ever commit. Day after day, I thought of the many things I should have done differently. And finally, I cried out to God. One night after a day of hunting, I knelt alone in the woods. Oh God, my life is at an end. If it wasn't for the children, I, I couldn't go on. If I hadn't failed Allison as a husband, she wouldn't have turned to someone else. Lord, for Allison and me, it's too late. But I want to start a new life with you. I repent of the sins that I've committed against you. I'm really sorry for the way I've lived. Would you save me, Lord, and give me a new life? Would you take the rest of my life and use me for your plans? Use my gifts and talents for your work. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Come into my heart and life, Jesus. Months later, the pastor's sermon reminded me of who I had been. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, Jesus said. Are you following Jesus Christ? Are you following your own whims, your own agenda? Jesus said, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. A fruit tree doesn't strain to bring forth fruit. It comes naturally. And the same is true for us when we walk in the Spirit of God. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Are you doing okay, Dave? Better than ever. I've been religious for the praise of men, but now I'm saved. I just want to please the Lord. He's really changing my prideful heart. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Only God can transform the heart as the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. 
You know, I've spent more than 40 years of my life selfishly following only what made me feel and look good. Now I want Jesus to be pleased with me. All that the world offers is empty. It loses its attraction in time. By the way, I, I met a young widow, a, a Christian with two small children. Oh, the one who lost her husband in a plane crash? Yes. We've become friends. Good. You both will need the Word of God to heal you emotionally. Marcy and I began to date and we married a year and a half later. It isn't easy to blend two families, let alone two with five children between them. She had two and I had three. All of us had been hurt. All of us were deeply wounded by loss and disappointment. We made every mistake that new couples and parents, old and new, make as we struggled to learn to live as one in the Lord. Why didn't you consult me before you made these plans? Oh, I, I, I didn't think you'd mind. You treat me as if I don't even exist. Now, that's not true. You know I love you, but I have my own needs. It's all about you, isn't it? No, no. It's, it's about us, Marcy. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't discuss this with you. I, I should have. Apology accepted. Dave, what are we going to do? We argue much more than I expected. Yeah, sometimes I, I just want to run away and hide. <laughs> You'd better not find my hiding place. We have kids to consider, so I guess we can't do that. God never said it would be easy. He did say, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Bible also says, iron sharpeneth iron. As we grow in the knowledge of God's word, we'll get better. I stepped down from my job as director of a large, prestigious marching band to take a low-key job as an elementary band director. God was guiding my life, and it was wonderful. The school had a video production studio, and the Lord showed me how this could be used for His glory. That was a good production, Dave. <laughs> my first one, and I wanted you to see it. Good job. You're very talented, honey. You know, I really enjoy putting together videos, writing the script, choosing the sound, cutting the images to match and tell the story. God has gifted you. Uh, for His glory, I've always wanted to be the best. Now, I want to be the best for Him. There is a difference. And because it's a Christian school video, I can use scripture. Of course. Marcy. I could make hunting and fishing videos that teach Christian principles. Well, you like to hunt and fish. I'm so grateful to God for you, for this job, for the gifts and talents he gave me. I'm honored that God would use me in any way. I think it was James who wrote, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We took our daughter for an interview to attend a Christian school near us, and somehow the principal knew of my musical background. Later, I talked with our pastor. How'd you like the school? They wanted me to be the band director. They have a band? I'm a small one, so it's only part-time. The principal was overjoyed when he learned my background. <laughs> I thought you gave that up. Well, I did, but it turns out that they've been praying for a band director all summer. Looks like God answered their prayer. I'm not convinced, though, that I should do that again. Unless it's God's will for you. I'm working so hard to stay away from anything that will seem to exalt me in any way. I want everything in my life to bring glory to the Lord. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The principal said the kids have lost interest in the band. Well, it's up to you to spark their interest. The Lord healed the wounds in our children's lives and also in ours. He made us a family unified by his word. I took the job at the school and in 12 years I went from part-time to full-time, from 30 kids to 160. That has been the most satisfying and enjoyable season of my life. Hey, look at this kids, new uniforms donated to us. And they're even in our school colors. All right, okay, okay, listen up, listen up. We're going to put a cross right in the middle of the street for this parade. And when we march down the street, the cross will go before us as we play. We'll even release a white dove from the foot of the cross. So, play your best and do all to the glory of God. As I got older, I stepped down from directing the marching band to part-time band director at three small Christian schools. God even let me start a band and lesson program for homeschooled students. I get to work with some of the greatest kids in the world, but 
God had yet another great ministry for me. You want to sail the intercoastal waterway? Yes. It's been a lifelong dream. I knew you liked to sail, but that's a big challenge. It is. But I, I think the trip can be used to glorify the Lord. My boat is a 25-foot sailboat with a shallow water keel that's perfect for the intercoastal waterway. God has blessed me so much. He really has, Dave. I want to name the boat Godspeed. I'll paint the fish on it, symbolizing Christians becoming fishers of men. And I'll fly the Christian flag at the top of the mast, a witness to everyone who sees it. How long will you be gone? Well, more than a month. It's over a thousand miles. Call it a short-term mission trip. You can share the gospel with many people along the way. I made the trip in 2003. Starting in Florida, I sailed north, having many adventures and meeting all kinds of people. Several times I went aground, but God was with me the whole journey. I give my testimony to men's groups, telling of God's wonderful grace in my life. What are your gifts and talents? They come from God and belong to Him. If you know Christ as Savior, surrender everything to Him and let God use your talents to touch the lives of others. He will bless you in ways you never expected. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. Listening friend, he gave himself for you to ransom you from the enemy of your soul. If you're in the clutches of something you cannot control, Jesus came to set you free. He said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. All you have to do is repent of your sins right now and ask Him to save you. There are no special words, but they must be sincere with all your heart. God can see the motives of your heart. If you need help in making this crucial decision, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607.